Hi guys, this is Daniel, n 0 ay and Sebastian, KB0TTL here with another BridgeCom Systems live stream. Um, today's live stream is the Father's Day special, day two live stream. Um, so this is to commemorate Father's Day and uh, field day coming up. We've got a sale going on right now, a special, and uh, we're going to be here today answering um, your guys' questions, your guys' sales questions, product feature questions, anything like that. Um, kind of like if we were at a Hamfest booth, similar type of setup. Um, we're going to be here for an hour today, guys, and uh, from now until 11 um, Central Time, 11 a.m. And uh, we'll just be here answering your questions. So if you guys want to, I think there's already a bunch of people uh, look been that, that have been on the stream waiting for it to start. Um, if you want to go ahead and uh, comment your uh, your name and your your call sign, where you're from, uh, in the in the chat right next to the stream. Um, I'd love to shout you out and to see who's here, see how many people we've got and where you guys are all from. That'd be great. Um, we're a little bit before uh, 10 here, just a minute or so before, so we'll just kind of, you know, read out some of these and wait for everyone to show up and uh, and then we'll get on with it. So just some people coming on here. We've got Brian, uh, W3PDW here. We've got uh, Bruce, W2, uh, NYP from Charlotte, North Carolina. We've got uh, Beth again, uh, KK4PJA. Um, happy Thursday to you. Just a good, a nice Thursday morning, guys. And uh, we're just happy to have you guys all on and uh, happy to do another stream for you. We had a really good one yesterday. Um, today we're going to be giving another another giveaway away. We're going to be giving another uh, AnyTone 878 Plus with a free um, with a free protective case with that. Um, we're going to be giving that that away at the end of the stream here, so you got to stay till the end, guys, and uh, just sign up in the link below this video and get to get into that giveaway and to have a potential to win. Um, we just drew a winner last time and yesterday, and uh, the first one didn't show up; they weren't in the stream, so we drew another one. So you, we do you guys do have to be on the stream here, but uh, if you are, it'd be really great, and uh, you could win a radio. So some more people here. We've got uh, Eric, Frisco, Texas. We've got uh, Austin from Denver, Colorado. We've got uh, Gilbert, uh, K0 or KO4DPZ from South Carolina. Bruce Barkley from Georgia. And guys, if I'm looking away from the camera here up a little bit, it's because we have a, uh, a TV there with all the comments. And uh, so I'm just reading those off as we go. And uh, that's how I'll be able to, uh, to talk to you guys more or less. So it's really neat. Um, I'm sure we've got a lot of people from all around. Looks like we've got 83 people on right now. Um, all around the country, and uh, this is really cool. We got uh, Michael from Texas. We've got uh, Leo sneaking in from work um, to join us. That's really cool um, that you're able to get on here, even you know doing your other things. But um, so yeah, so yeah, we'll give it a couple more minutes just for people to get on, guys. If you haven't already, um, make sure to go down below this video and click the link to sign up for the giveaway that's going on right now. It's just going to be for the duration of this live stream. We're just going for an hour, and we'll draw a winner probably at about 10.55 or so, and uh, to win this AnyTone 878 Plus and this uh, free protective case, and of course BridgeCom University will come with that, and it's going to be really cool. That's probably you know a $270 or $370 value right there you can get for free right now. So make sure to go and do that. Uh, make sure to like this stream, guys, if you liked it, and make sure to keep commenting uh, if you haven't already your name and uh, where you're from. Got a few more people. Um, Ralph from, Ralph Stark from Michigan. We've got uh, Alex from Florida. We've got Bill from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Richard Coy from Troy, New York. A lot of cool people. Monvel from Nashville. Uh, all sorts of cool guys. Looks like we have some people from last time. Um, and guys, yeah, we just want to we want to get you guys all on the stream here. Uh, want to have as many of these as we can, you know. And the the more people we get on them, and the more you guys keep coming back, uh, the more that we know that these are a good deal for us and, and for you guys as well. So uh, a couple quick announcements here. Um, we are having a sale right now from now until uh, Friday at midnight. So this Friday tomorrow at midnight, um, you're gonna be you're gonna get a free protective case. Protective uh, case with any any tone HT purchase, so that's an any tone 878 plus, or, or an 868 or an 878 regular, anything like that. You're going to get a free protective case. That's a $25 value, um, just right now. So this is just a just a, two more days of this, and uh, then it's going away, and just the regular regular deal. So if you've been looking to buy one of these radios, um, now is definitely the time to get it. Uh, we're also giving you 10% off all of our accessories. 
uh, all of our AnyTone accessories rather for the handheld and the mobile so you can even get like the tri-band mobile antenna for 10% off uh, or any of our cool accessories like the, our very popular BCS 200 speaker mic or a Nagoya antenna or a battery eliminator or anything like that guys so um, links for all that are in the description right below this video so make sure you guys go and place your orders we have a limited supply of this stuff right now um, we do have some more shipments coming in but we're not sure exactly when they're going to be here so if you've been wanting to get one of these radios now is definitely the best time so yeah, um, with that guys, uh, we'll call out a few more names. Wow, we've got Simon from Melbourne, Australia, VK3XEM. That's really cool. Oh, wow, it's all the way, it's probably like uh, the middle of the night over there almost. Um, we've got uh, Richard Casper from uh, Roberts, Idaho. And we've got Raymond from Jacksonville as well. we got Craig from East Lansing, Michigan. Um, Craig Tucker. So there's a lot of really cool people on the stream, guys. I, there's a, you know people from all over the world are chiming in to... Uh, to just join us here today. Uh, so guys with that, um, you know what we're going to be doing with this, this live stream is, is just kind of answering your questions and, uh, and such. So if you would go ahead and start putting some questions that you have into the stream, into the comments feed next to the video, um, we can start answering those for you as best as we can. Uh, another quick announcement guys, uh, somebody was asking about shirts yesterday. Uh, well, we don't have any shirts yet, but we do have hats. We actually literally just got these in yesterday, right after the stream. I think it was like during the stream, the shipment arrived. Uh, and these are official Bridgecom Systems hats. We've, we just got a bunch of these um, that we, we're going to, you know, we we're able to get you guys. They've, they're really cool. They've got uh, the Bridgecom Systems uh, logo on the front, of course. And then they've got on the back, they've got Success is My Duty. Because um, we all would, we all want to be successful, guys. We believe that success is our duty to you guys. Uh, they got a cool red rim here, and they're just a really neat hat. Um, so you know, people have been wanting some Bridgecom, some Bridgecom uh, merchandise, some swag, and so uh, we finally got it. It was a long time in the making, but uh, we're gonna have some here, and that's that's really cool. So um, these will be available for sale shortly. We don't have them up on the site yet, but we will probably um, this week, maybe early next week. Um, those are gonna be for sale. I'm sure we'll email out an announcement for that. Um, but if you guys have been wanting to get a Bridgecom hat, now you can. So those are now those are going to be available on the website soon. And I'll just kind of leave this here so you guys can see it through the stream. Um, all right, guys. Okay. So yeah, I've got a few more people in here, guys. If you have any questions, um, please drop them in the comments feed or the, or the uh, comments section next to the uh, the this live stream, and uh, we'll answer those just as quickly as we can and try to get as many as. Uh, as many as possible in the you know short one hour we're here and uh, hopefully you guys get some value of it and really enjoy it and if you do you know hit like and subscribe we really appreciate it okay a um, couple more people uh, Greg Oberg um, he's got his DMR ID there and uh, Clayton Cullen from San Luis California so that's cool. Uh, okay, so TJ Van, De Van Devin said, uh, you said yesterday that there was an actual Bluetooth remote mobile head coming out for the Anytone. Is it more? Uh, the comments cut off there, but basically what, what's going on right now with the mobile is it's not, we don't know exactly what it's going to be. All we know is that it's a some kind of remote um, like microphone or face that's a Bluetooth and it has probably going to have some kind of screen on it or something like that. We have not gotten a physical sample or even seen pictures. Um, so we really don't know what exactly it's going to look like. We just know that there's something like that in development, and and Anytone at this point anticipates on releasing it in this autumn. So that's all we know. Um, as soon as we have more details, we will absolutely let you guys know. That's it. But that's all we have for now. Um, Scott Virtue says we should give away some hats at the end of the stream. Uh, we might. We might very well give a hat away with the uh, this radio. We just we're going to give away as well. So that would be pretty cool. Um, all right. Andrew Magnet says or asks, are your radios purely digital or are they analog as well? Uh, that's a good question. Question. So all of our AnyTone radios we sell are both analog uh, FM and they're also DMR uh, digital mode. So there's they are dual mode radios. They can transmit on uh, and receive on UHF and VHF analog channels and uh, DMR channels. So they are a very versatile radio so like any of your analog stuff you're able to hear and, and talk to and any of your DMR stuff you can hear and talk to um, now our repeaters on the other hand we have uh, we have some repeaters that we sell and they uh, we, they can do digital modes as well they're by uh, right out of the box they're analog but you can purchase like a digital upgrade kit and do pretty much all of the digital modes um, with your repeater so that's available as well 
Okay, I hope that answers your question there. Um, next question here. Uh, let's see, let's see what we've got. So, my radio video is asked, he was on the stream yesterday, uh, what is the most popular DMR talk group in the USA to listen to? Um, Sebastian could probably answer that. What's the most popular DMR talk group to listen to? Um, it depends on what area of the nation you're in. Um, I hear a lot going on USA Nationwide. I hear a lot going on on major city uh, talk groups like Chicago talk groups, San Francisco talk groups. I was listening to a Las Vegas talk group the other day. I can't specifically say what's the most popular. I know BYRG is pretty big around this area here in Kansas City, though. There you go. So it probably depends on where you're at a little bit. Go ahead. You can, okay. Um, cool. Um, all right, next question here. Uh, Gary Stout asks, are there any issues with the DB Mega used in mobile applications and just killing the power without properly shutting the Pi? Oh, okay, so like he's wondering if there's an issue with if he just turns the power off on the Pi and if it'll mess, mess it up rather than, than shutting it down properly. Um, do you know anything about that? Um, it actually does not mess it up. In fact, okay, the Raspberry Pi itself, I mean, the DV Mega units that we have themselves don't have an on-off switch in the front. It's not like a Windows-based operating system where you have to shut it down properly. Simply unplugging the power is actually the way to go on the DV Mega. Well, there you go. Um, so James Polson asks, can you tell the difference between DMR and D-Star? I would assume that means D-Star. Um, well, the difference is that those are two two digital modes, basically. Um, DMR is they're they're very similar, and I guess technically how they work, um, it, you'd have to it, it'd be difficult to get into the intricacies on this stream. Um, but basically, from a user perspective, uh, your DMR and and DSTAR are both digital modes. They but they have different radios that are made for them. So DMR, um, the advantage of it over D-Star is that D-Star is mainly, it's, it's been around quite a while, but I think the only people that make radios for it are like uh, Yaesu and ICOM, I believe. Uh, it's not very many manufacturers. I don't think, I don't know if it's open or not, um, but there's not much, many actual radios for it. Whereas with DMR, uh, it's, go well, ahead. They tend to be brand specific. I believe yeah. Yaesu is D-Star. I believe that's the case. But anyway, you, well, have they, to have, you have to have that brand of radio to do that mode. There's no Swiss Army knife. There's no jack of all trades. Yeah. Um, you're not going to get in any tone and do D-Star. You're not going to get in any tone and do other modes. Any tone is going to be um, Brandmeister specific, uh, DMR mark specific, and I believe you can also configure them to do TGIF, although we haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. So. But with the uh, DMR, the advantage and the reason we went with it is because you've got a lot more radio options here. There's a lot more. There's a much larger user base um, on DMR, and it's uh, it's not like an open source mode. But there's a lot of manufacturers that can make radios um, on the DMR mode, and so you have a lot of com competition. Drives the cost down, more support, um, more users, you know, more uh, parts and everything like that. And so that's why we, you know, and there's more uh, repeaters and more networks and things like that. Just a lot more development going on in that space, and that's why uh, we think the DMR is better for for most users. Okay, here so. we have C4 FM is the issue. Oh yeah, D Star is ICOM. Okay, yeah. But you have to have the specific brands, is what I'm saying, in order to and in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And these aren't brand specific, and there's a few different networks or talk group selections or servers that you can use with the Anytone, where you can't use a few different ones with uh, with D Star. So there you go. Hope that answers your question. Um, Aaron asked, do you sell AM public safety transmitters? Uh, we do not sell AM public safety transmitters. Okay. Um, SML guy asked, uh, Daniel, what's your favorite thing about the uh, Anytone 578? That's a good question. Um, my favorite thing is probably the, um, well, there's a few favorite things I like. Um, probably the coolest, like, I mean, it's tri-band. It's a tri-band mobile, which is really cool. Um, but it's also Bluetooth, so that makes it really cool. You know, using it in your car, you can almost have it like a like a phone or something like that. Like it's uh, it's not. Uh, it's totally hands-free if you have the right setup. Um, but the other cool thing from a user is just like this microphone. This is a hand. This is a speaker microphone. Um, so it's got a, mi a speaker in it as well as the microphone, and it's a, this is a very loud, very easy to use radio. So like you can have your uh, radio mounted somewhere else and the microphone coming up to you and you're you know, able to listen to people and talk and operate the radio very effectively just from the hand mic. And uh, that makes it a really good user experience. 
Um, it's just very easy to use, very easy to understand, people very clear, and uh, it just makes it a really good radio to use every day. That's what I like. Okay. Um, Donald Smith asked, can he use a Raspberry Pi to connect his 578 and 878 to do packet? Um, I don't think that you can really, you might be able to talk um, to that more. I don't know of a way to configure it as a packet modem. Well, yes and no. If you have the proper connectors and if you've actually been able to some way, somehow, configure the thing as a packet modem, sure. As of now, I don't know of a way to do that. I think you actually have to purchase an actual packet modem from one of the catalogs, which we do not sell yet. So. Yeah, yeah I just think there's really not a lot of ways to inject <laughs> packet audio into the, into the radios to send to broadcast out. But, uh, okay, Eddie asked, do you sell the Blue Yeti microphone on the desk in front of you? We do not sell the Blue Yeti microphone. It's a good microphone, though, if you're looking for one. Uh, but, yeah. So, let's see. Uh, Raymond asked if C4FM is digital. That's, uh, it is digital. It's a, that is Yaesu System Fusion. That's a, their own digital mode that only Yaesu sells equipment for. Um... So Dan asks, does a programming cable come with the radios or are they separate? Um, so it depends on which radios you buy. If you buy any of these AnyTone radios we have, like the 878 Plus or the 578 Plus or, or 578 Pro rather, um, they do come included a programming cable. They have a programming cable at no additional charge. And uh, the programming software we have for them is free. You just download it on our website. And uh, we always have the most up-to-date, stable version on the website. So, yep. Uh, so some of our other stuff doesn't have uh, programming cables included, but they are available for purchase. Okay. Um, Bruce Shapiro asks, uh, how about a BridgeCom talk group to ask each other about the radios? Well, uh, we actually we're probably may put up a uh, DMR repeater here soon. Uh, we're going to be moving to a different building, and uh, we may do that then, uh, but that's kind of just up in the air as to whether or not we're going to do that. Yep. So Kent Stiglitz asks, is there a video showing you how to program an analog channel through the keypad? Uh, yeah, there is. We have. Uh, there is. Mm -hmm. We've done for both the 578 and the 878, actually, um, how to get them in uh, via the keypad, and they are out there. Yeah, I think it's like how to do a VFO channel or... Or you just look up something like that um, on our on our uh, YouTube page, or just in the YouTube search, and you should find something like that. Or even in Bridgecom University. I mean, it is assuming that at some point you'll hook your radio up to the computer, get your talk group list in, um, get your contact list in. Uh, those are going to be a real pain to try to program through the keypad. But as far as just throwing a channel or frequency in on the fly, yeah, you can do that. We have videos. There you go. Um, all right, going on to another question here. Crabwire asks, um, regarding the rubber duck antennas, I have the 878 with the antenna. I have the Nagoya 701. Is there a better antenna, or does it? It was cut off there. But um, in terms of antennas, guys, uh, these radios come with a rubber duck. It is a pretty good rubber duck for uh, as far as rubber ducks are concerned. Um, you can get an antenna like this, which is a Nagoya 701. Um, this is a quarter wave whip. The, the standard is just an eighth. Uh, eighth wave. Um, so this is like just a tiny bit longer than the uh, stock antenna and it provides a much better uh, better performance and it's but it's not very it doesn't take up very much more space which is why we th we think it's the overall best uh, aftermarket antenna for this radio. Now you can get you know better ones I guess in terms of performance and like range and reception and stuff but like if you get like a Nagoya 771 which is like a quite quite a bit longer um, whip antenna so but but then you sacrifice you know it just it's more it's bigger it's more cumbersome uh, it takes up more space so you just kind of have to trade off there you know what what your your goals are you know like are you trying to have a radio that's you know gonna you can just walk around with it it's not going to be very uh, in your way and it's going to get really you know pretty good range and reception or do you want to have a really like highly you know high high range you know high receive kind of setup you know then there's a ton of antenna options for you just kind of what your what your goals are but there's definitely like better ones it just depends on what what better means to you 
you know. Well, I'm one of the guys that prefer the 771 because I kind of live out in a more rural area, and my nearest repeater is more in a suburban type area, and I kind of live down, you know, in a valley of sorts here. So, I mean, if you want to transmit out of a situation like that, want just a little more, a little more gain to it, then a 771 is your friend. But otherwise, 701 uh, for the urban environment or for the suburbs or for some, you know, some place that's anywhere near the big city where your repeater is, the 701 should be adequate. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. And guys, uh, just a couple quick announcements here. Um, it looks like we have a few more people on the stream. So if you haven't already, please go down uh, below this video, below this stream. There's a link to the sign up to the giveaway. You're going to get a free uh, Anytone 878 Plus and a free protective case and free Bridgecom University. Um, that's a stellar value right there. There's a link in the description. Just put in your name, email, and call sign. You can sign up to win that. We're going to draw the winner here at the end of the stream um, in just you know, less than an hour. So make sure you go and do that, guys. Uh, other than that, we are also doing a, a sale right now. There's a special going on. So if you buy any Anytone HT, like this 878 Plus, an 878, or an 868, you're going to get a free protective case with that, a $25 value. Uh, and you're also going to get free Bridgecom University right now um, until Friday at midnight. Um, so it's a really great deal if you've been looking to get one of these radios, even if you're looking to get like an Anytone 578 or uh, something like that. This is a great time to do it. Um, summer's upon us, guys, and this is a great time to get out and use your radios. Um, other than that, guys, we have 10% off all Anytone accessories, um, including like, you know, awesome ones like this BCS speaker mic, the uh, Nagoya antenna, and, and things like that. So make sure you guys talk up on accessories. There's a link for that in the description, guys, below this stream. All, all the information today is below the stream. And guys, um, if you, there's been some people commenting like they've been looking for a community or you know they want to hang out with people. We got a lot of people on the stream, guys, and I, I'm sure you guys are all you know avid fans and you want to you know really engage with these radios. We have an awesome uh, Facebook group um, that we have. It's the official group. It's got over 3,000 super active, super friendly people in there that are just they love you know DMR and repeaters and Anytone radios and stuff like that. Um, and there's going to be a link in the description of this video to go to that group, guys. If you want to go and join our Facebook group and join a super active community, they're really helpful you know help you build code plugs and program your radio and answer your questions and all sorts of cool things like that so if you've been wanting to join a cool community um, there's a link in the description to join that Facebook group it's just free to join guys it's a really cool opportunity all right guys um, so with that we can go back to some more questions here um, let's see uh, all right Scott Virtue asks um, can I use a DV Mega with a Verizon hotspot or phone providing internet connection in my camper um, not usually in range of a repeater. Um, Scott, yes, you absolutely can. You can you can run your uh, DV Mega hotspot off any kind of Wi-Fi device, like uh, like your Verizon hotspot or your uh, or your phone, anything like that. Uh, Craig Tucker asks, how long has Bridgecom been in business? Uh, we've been in business quite a while. I believe we started around 2003, 2004 uh, is when the is when the company started. So probably you know 15 uh, years or so. Um, Mark Waldrop asks. Is there a video on how to download and install a code plug from your list? Um, I don't know if we have any videos showing you how to like directly download one from our list, but we do have a how to build a code plug video or how to get a code plug, and uh, that should show you how to do that. Uh, what I don't have yet is one that actually shows how to go in and download it or you know how to pick one from our library. What I do have is a video that shows how to convert said code plug to work with your new Anytone radio. And there's a bit of a process in converting that file to work with, say, the newest version of firmware that might be on the radio when you get it out of the box. So you'll want to see that video converting an old, an old code plug for use on your new radio. So there you go. That's actually a great idea. We'll probably make that video for you. Um, just a more specific video, but that's a great idea. Um, so uh, Doug asks, is there a TGIF Anytone talk group? Uh, not as yet. Not that I know of. We haven't had opportunity to really convert one of these to work on mm. the TGIF network here okay. as of yet. So. Maybe. We don't know for sure. Um, all right. Scott Virtue asks, do you guys have a storefront? I make a few trips to Missouri every year and would love to stop in for an eyeball. Uh, <laughs> um, well, we don't, we don't have a storefront per se. We're actually moving to a different building. Um, we do a actually have uh, walk-ins just, you know, fairly frequently. People, customers, you can still come into our store and uh, just give us a call ahead of time and you can come in and, and purchase items or, or hang out with us for a little bit. Um, that's totally possible. Uh, we don't really have a store storefront though. Uh, we're just it's kind of by appointment only. 
and just you know we just sell stuff uh, online and, and by the phone and that's another thing guys um, we do have phone operators standing by of course during the duration of the stream and also you know this d d today and tomorrow just normal business hours to take your guys orders over the phone if you'd rather place your order over the phone than on the website you know, maybe you have something complicated like a repeater sale you want to do or uh, or some complicated system where you just have some questions. You know, give us a call and we'd, we'd love to answer those for you. Our number is 816-532-8451, guys. 816-532-8451. And that number is going to be in the description um, below this video as well. And, uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and do some more questions here. Um, Bruce Shapiro asks, will there be an extend battery for the HT? Well, that's a great question, Bruce. Actually, uh, as a matter of fact, the battery that comes with it is the extended yeah. battery. So normally, these came out with a uh, with a 21 milliamp or 2100 milliamp battery, if you can see there. This one's a bit thicker, so that one was flush. This is the 3100 milliamp battery, so it actually is the extended battery from the factory, and uh, all of our extra batteries are the 3100 milliamp batteries as well. So these are the extended batteries for this radio. It just is a normal, it's just something we sell with it all the time because they were so popular um, that we just decided to sell them with the extended battery instead of the regular battery. Okay, uh, Richard Casper said, thanks for making this so fun. I really appreciate the information. My pleasure, Richard. We really, we really like you guys, having you guys on and love doing these streams for you. So guys, if we, um, if, yeah, put in some more questions in the, uh, in the feed here and we'll keep on answering for you. Uh, we really like being here and we want, you know, to make sure you guys have a good time. So uh, that's why we're here. Answer your questions and, and give you good experience. Okay, uh, Richard asked, could you clear up the differences between a code plug and a talk group uh, for us? You can probably clear that up, Sebastian. <laughs> code plug and a talk group. Okay, the code plug actually refers to the actual program or actual set of commands, channels, um, etc. that you program into your radio. The talk group is actually part of said code plug. So the talk group list is actually a CSV file uh, that you would upload from Brandmeister or one of the websites around here or we can um, send you our uh, talk group list as well that we use in our radios when you get the pre-programmed DB Mega Bundle. The talk group list is just basically a list of all of the commonly used talk groups um, here in the United States and other countries um, that is imported into your radio. It can be updated from time to time. So the talk group or talk group list points to what talk group you're going to talk to when you're on a digital repeater or on your hotspot. The code plug is actually all-encompassing. Suppose you had local repeater channels entered. Suppose you had a few analog channels. Suppose you had multiple repeaters. Suppose you want to set up your radio for APRS. That's all part of your code plug. So basically what you're referring to, um, that talk group is a subset of your big code plug. There you go. Hope that helped you. Um, that's another good idea, code plug. I think we've already made, you know, kind of defining what some of the things in a code plug are. Uh, but we might make another video about that as well. Okay. Um, Jim Blythe asked, does Bridgecom offer an HF radio? Well, the answer, Jim, is, is not yet. Uh, we may in the future. We've got some that we're, we're looking at. Um, we don't right now, but we may in the future. Um, okay. Uh, will the, so my radio videos ask, will the GPS auto set the radio clock and date? Um, uh, we're actually about to put a video out that does show how to set the radio clock and date. Um, that's both for the 578 and the 878. Um, you can set the clock and date uh, right away when you purchase the radio from the startup menu, or you can set it later. There's no given time that it has to be set. It can be done um, just typically from the menus of the radio. So we'll mm -hmm. be getting to that here shortly. There you go. Um, Keith asks, how can I get the call sign stickers for my HT? Uh, well, that's you need to go to our friend uh, KCAGL. I believe this is call sign. He's got a just if you Google uh, KCAGL sticker or something like that. He's got a website, and uh, he actually prints those stickers himself and uh, makes these custom stickers for you. Now we we just do promotions with him from time to time where we'll throw his stickers in um, with our radios with the purchase of our radios because um, it's a really good deal. It seems like you guys really like the stickers, and uh, so you just go to his website and purchase one. I believe they're only like ten or fifteen dollars. Okay, uh, my radio videos asks how long does the clock stay set uh, with the battery removed in, in an any tone radio? How long does the front end 
The clock. The clock and date stay set with the battery removed on an any tone. <laughs> We've never actually tried that. Well, here, for a little experiment, we'll go ahead, we'll remove it. Now, of course, we're not going to leave it sit there for a month, you know, for practicality purposes. Let's leave one just connected for a day. Let's see if it stays there, and uh, <laughs> we'll let you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, I think Doug Coomer, I don't know if he's already been answered or not, but he's asking is there's a TGIF talk group for the Anytone uh, talk group. Uh, we don't know for sure if there is or not. He that there is one. Oh, there is one. Um, okay. I went ahead in the uh, chat here. Uh, I asked him what that talk group number is. We're just waiting on a response from him. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, that's great. Um, all right. So Jared asked, how does the 878 front end handle external high gain antenna, say the Nagoya 771? Will it cause so much desense to make the radio deaf? Uh, no, it won't. Uh, it's it, it'll work perfectly fine. It's not gonna. It's it's matched properly to this radio, uh, so you should have no problems. It should be a lot better. You'll get a lot. You know, you'll be able to hear things farther away, and uh, probably be clearer as well. So you should be fine. Guys, if you have any more questions, um, please put them in the uh, the comment section next to the video or next to the stream, and we'll we'll answer them just as fast as we can. Um, yeah, guys, uh, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button below this uh, the stream. If you like this stuff, if you like us doing these, we that's how we know if you guys really like this or not. And subscribe so you guys never miss any more announcements or streams or uh, or, or giveaways or anything like that. Guys, we got a few more people on the stream here. Um, if you haven't already, make sure to go in the link uh, in the description to sign up for our giveaway. We're going to be giving you an Anytone 878 Plus and a free protective case. Um, Bridgecom University comes with that as well, and we're going to be giving that away at the end of the stream today, guys. End of the stream today. So make sure you're in that giveaway because there were some people that weren't in the giveaway yesterday and they missed out. So make sure you guys go and sign up for that. Yeah, guys. Okay, um, another question here. Gary Stout recently bought the 878HT from Bridgecom Systems. Is it possible to listen to, say, Talk Group 91 without the hotspot timing out or just for monitoring? Okay, so um, what he's actually here asking is because a lot of folks are like really, really long winded on that talk group is, hey, can I monitor this without the DV Mega timing out? Well, first of all, I'm going to mention that the DV Mega does not actually time out, there's not actually a timeout setting on it. Now, what there might be set on your radio, if you have this set in preferences, is a timeout setting in your radio's menu. Um, we'll try to point a, f a future video at eliminating some of these timeout settings or adjusting them you know, upwards of a few minutes so that you're not affected by them. But as far as I understand, there is no timeout setting per se on the DV Mega itself. That's all on your radio. There you go. Hope that helps you. Guys, If uh we're here to answer your questions. Make sure to, to put them in the, the comment section. Um, yeah, guys, uh, we have operators standing by over the phone if you want to give us a call right now um, or after the stream if you like, 816-532-8451. Again, 816-532-8451. Uh, and, yeah, if you've forgotten who we are, this is, again, uh, I'm Daniel, n 0 -Y, and this is Sebastian, KB0TTL with Bridgecom Systems, guys, doing this stream for you. Um, so yeah, just kind of waiting for questions. We've got about 30 minutes left, um, and uh, then we'll, we'll draw the winner close to the end and uh, wrap up with you guys. But we'll be here all day and uh, answering your questions and, and helping, you know, make sure you guys have a good experience. Cool. All right. Let's see. Uh, again, guys, if you want to join a cool community, we've got a, an awesome Facebook group that uh, with over with 3,000 plus members of a ton of active friendly guys that would love to hang out with you and uh, there's a link in the description of this stream to join that it's just a couple simple questions and you can be in looks like we've got a couple more uh, comments here we've got uh, Larry uh, AA4KE and uh, he's wondering if he can get 2 meter 440 and DMR uh, he's been away for a while so this is he's asking this question uh, absolutely you can get a dual band 2 meter 440 uh, NDMR radio that's like this one right here this is the Anytone 878 plus it uh, is a dual band DMR and technically dual mode radio because it can go on analog FM and DMR so uh, yeah you can actually do that also if you did this will do the both of those and if you want to try band this will do 
440, 2 meter, and 220 on both analog and DMR. So if you want, that's an even better option. And this is this got more power as well. Um, so that's totally possible. You absolutely can do that if you want to get one of these. We actually have them on sale right now. You get a free $25 protective case when you place your order. Uh, so make sure to go do that. There's a link in the description below, guys, if you want to go ahead and place an order. And we'll get you one chipped out very, very soon. All right, cool. Um, one Wheel Mob says, is asking, we're, we're going to make some videos about APRS, guys. Uh, we're, we've been trying to do that. It's just uh, a bit more difficult for us. Um, just because of what our situation, we don't have many repeaters around, but uh, we, well, we would absolutely to like to make some for you. What we need to do in the new location is get a repeater set up in our shack back there and get the necessary hardware so that that is set up to do APRS, and then we'll have something to demo off of. None of the local repeaters have that active on them. All the uh, WB0YRG repeaters in the area actually have that disabled, so we don't really have a reference point where we can make a decent video yet, but we're working on it. Mm-hmm. There you go, but we will as soon as possible. Um, so the 878, uh, Russell's asking if the 878 can do APRS on analog or only through DMR. It can do, uh, the 878 radios can do it on both, but it's just transmit only APRS on both. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's just like a beacon. It's not, you can't receive anything on it. But yes, it can do it on both analog and DMR. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Let's see. Will a uh, Paul is asking, will a Bridgecom DMR repeater transmit APRS data received from an HT? Um, I'm no expert on the kind of controller you would need to do that, uh, that you would need to have in order to do that. Uh, but yes, with the right controller, or if you have the digital MMDVM hooked up and it is a DMR repeater, and then you have the right translation software on the other end. So it is possible uh, to use a Bridgecom repeater for that. There you go. Um, Let's see. Yeah, uh, Tim Nolan's asked if if you stop to scan an individual tot group, why when you transmit? Uh, oh, you may be, you may have to, uh, Tim. You might have to disconnect. You you have to disconnect from every tot group you get on. Um, when you when you like key up to a tot group, it like connect. What, how does it work? It connects to it and then you use tot group disconnect to disconnect. Okay, yeah. it, what he's more asking is the scanning of digital channels. So he's wanting to know if you could stop the scan on an individual talk group. Well, if that talk group is not keyed up per se, or it's not active on the repeater that you're scanning on that frequency pair or on that frequency that is in your scan list, no, it's not going to stop. It actually has to be an active talk group. And I don't really think scan is going to go through and say, hey, is this talk group active or not? If it's not active, I simply do not believe it will scan it it would have to connect and disconnect randomly from each truck group, which your radio simply does not do during the scan process. Well, there you go. Guys, if you have any more questions, uh, or if you, you know, wherever you're from, please uh, put them in the comments and uh, we'll try to read those off for you and uh, answer them as just as best as we can. Uh, hope you guys are getting some value from this. I think these are some really great questions we're getting and hopefully you guys are getting some good answers. You know, if you are, please uh, hit the like and the button and uh, so we know you guys like this. We've got uh, 177 people on the stream right now, guys. Um, hopefully we can get up to 200 or even more than that uh, by the end of it. That's a really great. I mean, when you think about it, you know, 200 people on one, one video, that's, uh, if you had that in like a, that'd be like a sizable ham fest, you know, a decent sized uh, ham fest right there. It's pretty neat that we we're all able to come together for this. Cool. Um, see if there's any more comments. Um, yes, let me see here. Yeah, um, yeah, guys, again. Uh, is it possible a, no, to customize ahead. the background image on the screen of the 868? Um, the 868, no. The 878 and 878 Plus you can do, but the 868 does not have that feature. There you go. Um, let me see. Can you recommend a good DMR repeater book or site for DMR repeater sites here in the U.S.? Well, here's the thing when it comes to DMR repeaters. Um, the clubs that run these DMR repeaters will change the color code, or they will go ahead and they will change the time slot from time to time periodically. Sites like Repeater Book aren't going to be up to date with that information. I've seen hams have such headache trying to program in digital channels into their radios for local repeaters because the color code has changed or the time slot has changed. 
and it doesn't reflect in repeater book, it doesn't reflect in these sites. It could take months, if not years, for that data to be updated. So what you have to do is actually not use repeater book for digital repeaters. Please don't. Please go directly to the website of the club that owns the repeater and get the most up-to-date information before you enter a channel. It, it's just so important, otherwise you're going to pull hair out and you're going to say, my radio doesn't work, or when in fact it's the color code and time slot that is not correct. There you go. Uh, we got quite a few more questions now. Um, Beth asks, if my 578 is working well for me now, do I need to update the firmware on the radio? Um, I don't think so. There's Usually firmware updates are mostly just, uh, what do you think about that? Um, firmware updates. Well, first of all, if your radio is actually doing, that is what it's supposed to, and it's meeting your needs, there's really very little reason to go ahead and update the firmware. Um, people tend to get in more trouble not all the firmware updates are as stable as we'd like, so people actually tend to get in more trouble if they have to have the latest firmware at all times. But they don't necessarily need the new features of the new firmware at the given time. Um, some new versions of firmware have difficulty reading older code plugs, so you then have to go in there and convert them. Sometimes newer firmware uh, means that the file formats of the CSV files uh, for your talk group list, for your contacts list, etc., are a little bit different. Sometimes entering new firmware will change some of the settings in your radio and aimantly, especially if the update isn't done correctly. So you just kind of open yourself up to a bunch of possibilities of your handheld not working correctly or not working as you remember it working by updating the firmware. So again, it should only be done on an as-needed basis. So yeah, at bottom line, if your work, if radio is working fine right now, I, I probably wouldn't update the firmware. And if there's some like major release, like a cool new feature or something like that, uh, with the new firmware, we'll absolutely let you guys know and uh, you know give you reason to go and do that then. Cool. Um, uh, Ralph asks if he's entered into the giveaway today. He seems to be having some trouble on his end. Uh, I can't confirm right here. Uh, I'm sure you probably are, you know, if you're logged in and if you've done it. Uh, just keep trying, uh, but I'm, you probably are. Um, Leon Goldry, da 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 da, da. Uh, Oh, he's, yeah, we are going to set up a repeater. We're going to, he's asking if, why don't we have a repeater? Um, we don't have a repeater because we don't, right at this moment, we're actually going to probably move buildings uh, next week, and we'll be able to set up a repeater on that building. But we actually don't, don't own the building that we're in right now. Uh, we just rent a space. So we'll probably be able to set up a repeater there. Um, but yeah, we obviously set up our own repeater. We did have one set up at a different test site for a while, uh, but we just, it's just, we haven't updated it in, in a while. Um, okay, cool. Um, so Larry's asking if he can use, uh, we don't know, but he's using, if he can use a different antenna for his 878. Possibly, I'm not familiar with that model. I couldn't comment on that. Um, Chuck Jacobs is asking, what is the, eight, the antenna on the HC on your right side, and uh, is it diff for the 878? I, well, this well, is... the 868. It's the same yeah. wavelength as the 878 stock antenna. It's just a little bit different design with the red tip on it for the 868. Yeah. So it's a cosmetic thing, really. <laughs> and this one's a bit, it's a bit harder. This one's a bit more flexible. This isn't going to be fun to get poked with if you have it on your belt. This is going to be a little more subtle, but really get the Nagoya because you're not going to feel that if it pokes you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Nagoya is a very bendy uh, whip whip style antenna. It just bends around. It's really good. Um, hope that answers that question. So uh, Scott Wilson says, uh, or ask, what's the best antenna for the eight, 878? Well, we kind of already answered that again. We, I personally think that the best overall antenna for it is going to be the Nagoya 701. Um, this is going to be just a very, it's not going to be very much bigger than the stock antenna, but it's going to have a very uh, drastic change in your performance, and uh, it's not really going to get in your way. So, you know, better could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. If you really want to go really long range, you know, you might want like a directional antenna, but that's just not practical for most people. So for the best overall antenna, I would recommend the Nagoya 701. It's only $21, and actually right now, it's 10% off. We're having a sale right now, guys. 10% uh, off all any tone accessories, and you're going to get a free case when you, when you buy a uh, any any tone HT, like this 878 Plus, or this uh, 868, or 878 regular, anything like that. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Okay, um, Bruce Shapiro, have you had any experience with USB stick hotspots? Uh, we've heard of them, we've seen them, unfortunately we haven't We haven't had much them. experience with yeah. them. Um, 
Okay. Andy Bruner is asking how durable is the housing for the 878 Plus? Would it hold up to first responder use? Does it have, have an IPS rating? have a little bit of fun with rating? it here, actually. Andy, um, just for an example, I'm actually going to get some F behind this throw here. So, yeah, it's very durable, this case. Is. He just threw it on the ground pretty hard there. Um, Housing's good. Yep, yeah, there you go. So it looks like it might have messed the antenna. The antenna didn't fare so well, but the housing is good. Yep. Really takes a good whack, and honestly, I think that that's not going to be. Oh, that's just the but antenna. That's just the base of the stocky antenna. Mm -hmm. but yep, it's all good. Which is why you want the 701. <laughs> so he just kind of whammied it into the floor, uh, and it there holds up really good. There's nothing wrong with the housing on that right Yeah, here. we can pop this other antenna on it. Yeah. But uh, no, this this is a very durable. We actually have a lot of firefighters and stuff that have, uh, have bought these radios because they they'd rather have them than what their uh, their their company provides. Um, but they're, it's extremely durable. I think it's an IP54 housing, so it's going to be very water uh, resistant and uh, you know splash resistant and stuff in the rain or you know hose spray or whatever like that. Um, so it's an extremely durable case. You know nothing's wrong with it. No, not even a scuff on it right there. Yep. Um, but yeah, Samuel Pagan asks, uh, is there a longer battery to replace the standard battery on the 878? Um, well, we just answered that one recently. Uh, basically, this is the longer battery. This is a 3100 milliamp battery. The, uh, the radios, when they originally came out, had a 21 milliamp, 100 milliamp battery, and this is the 3100 milliamp, so it's 100 more, or 1,000 more milliamps, and uh, it's the extended battery, but we just sell it as the stock battery, and you can buy additional 3100 milliamp batteries. But this, guys, the batteries in these radios last a long, long time. These radios are very efficient, and these batteries are very good, and we've had reports of guys, you know, able to use these radios and listen to them and even talk you know on a regular basis and not have to charge the radios for days or even you know weeks um, they can run on a single charge so they're very very good radios in terms of power but so that's cool um, so yeah if you want to get you know you can buy extra batteries they're normally thirty dollars uh, but right now they're ten percent off because of our sale so if you want to go those there's a link in the description below where you can order some batteries Okay, cool. Um, so Leo asks, is there a difference? Is there a lot of differences between one firmware update to the other? Um, it just depends on what, which update that comes out. You know, it's just like anything, uh, any any product that's in constant development. It just kind of depends on what they're what they're need to change or fix or, or add. Just kind of on an as per you know per update basis. Oh, a list of differences. Oh, like a. Uh, Leo, you're asking if there's like a, a change log, perhaps. Uh, maybe I don't know if we post those up or not, but we we might start. Uh, yeah. But I'll I'll note that down and ask. Um, Tom Owen says he has a radio ID or an ID from Radio ID. Is that a one size fits all DMR Mark Brandmeister and so on, or do I need a separate ID for them? Um, in terms of uh, IDs, that's a that's going to be your DMR ID. So that's going to work for you for all of DMR. Um, so all those those different those DM, uh, DMR Mark and Brandmeister are all they're just linking networks that are on top of the existing DMR technology. Um, so one ID, a one DMR ID from RadioID.net will work for all these different places. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Broads drone or uh, a customer ask here: Are the AnyTone speaker mics okay to use on digital mode with eight seven eight and eight six eight? I He's heard of problems with RF interference. Yeah, they're they're perfectly most fine. Most definitely, to use. So. most definitely. Yeah, we sell these almost with every radio we sell. One of these BCS 200 speaker mics, and uh, everyone loves them uh, quite a bit. We've never gotten any complaints about RF interference or, or you know poor quality or poor sound or anything like that. These work very very well, and they're extremely robust and reliable. More than 90% of the people that buy this radio buy it for digital DMR uh, yep. purposes. If there is any problem, we would have complaints out the wazoo, which we do not have. So. Yep. No, it works very well. Uh, there, we sell a ton of these mics. Um, okay. Uh, is it Jim Lannon asks, is it safe to pick up these radios by their antennas? He's always avoided it. Yeah, it's safe. Uh, you're not really going to, they're so low power, you're not going to get any like RF burns or anything like that. Uh, it's just a. Uh, you know, seven watt radio, so it's pretty good. It's <laughs> pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you're worried, maybe if you have a really delicate antenna or something like that, yeah. you know, you might be worried about breaking it. Uh, but for the stock ones, you should be fine. Okay, 
Um, yeah. Uh, Rich Casper asks, how long does it take to charge the 3100 milliamp battery? Just curious. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much. Probably a few hours. They come with uh, the radios come with rapid chargers, the rapid bucket chargers. Um, so probably it wouldn't take very long at all. Um, I've actually had varying reports on that, and this is based on when you get the radio out of the box. Okay, if the radio has sat in the Anytone warehouse for a couple weeks before it gets to us, or if it comes here by boat, that battery might be pretty flat, and it might take six to eight hours to charge. Versus uh, the ones we get Air Mail Express, which we do occasionally, may have been charged, you know, just hours ago, literally. So it's going to be between four and eight hours to charge that battery fully. There you go. Yeah. Okay, um, Lynn uh, asked, do you offer plug and plays with all the HT models? Um, we actually do, Lynn. So the one that we advertise on the website is, uh, is just with the, with the 878 Plus. But if you call in or, or ask us, uh, we can make you one with any of the other ones, like the 878 Regular and the 868. So we can do a plug and play for all of the Anytone HT models, if, you, if you'd like. You just have to come in, you have to ask us and order it special. See, and then Andrew says he's worried about the antenna connector breaking off, which was a problem on the TYTs. Let me explain something that's a little bit different about these uh, handhelds versus the TYT. Um, if you look at the antenna connector here, this is actually a male connector. It. This is actually a male connector. Here, Buckley, can we switch over to the camera? The um, camera? Going into a female antenna. Yeah. So that is actually countersunk down into the radio. So there's nothing on the radio that you could possibly break off. That's actually countersunk. It does not stick up from it. So if anything's going to break, it's going to be the connector on the rubber duck itself, which is super cheap to replace. So as that's countersunk, that does away with so many of the problems that you would experience with a TYT. So another good selling point for the Anytone is its durability. Yeah, yeah you've got like a nice plastic lip here that's going to really uh, keep this yeah. very sturdy. Um, Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay, guys. We got a lot of replacement antennas um, for this. <laughs> but uh, I'm just, the case, the radios are very durable. But I wouldn't recommend throwing them at the ground, even if you get one. <laughs> but uh, you'll definitely, you'll probably be fine. fine. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, what is the Ken's asking, or Kent's asking, what's the cost of the speaker mic? So uh, it's for the for the 878 here or any of the handhelds, this is a Kenwood. This is the BCS200. Now, normally these are uh, $29.99 on the store, free shipping. Um, but right now you're going to get 10% off, guys, 10% on, off on all accessories. So this would be like $27 then. Um, so it's a really great deal. And, uh, you know, even at $30, this is a seller deal for this. This is an extremely high quality. Uh, this is IP54 mic, water resistant, splash resistant. Um, and it's really great for you. So uh, there's a link in the description below, guys, if you want to go take advantage of this deal. Uh, in other words, guys, we are also doing a special on our HTs right now. You buy an HT, uh, like an Anytone 878 Plus or an uh, 878 or an 868, and you're going to get a free protective case here with a strap. And uh, that's going to be a $25 value for you guys. You're also going to get a normally like we, you know, we have Bridgecom University. You're going to get all the support that comes with your Bridgecom purchase and anything like that. And even if you buy a plug and play package, guys, you're still going to get that free protective case. Um, so if you've been looking to get one of these things, now is the best time. Click the link in the description below or give us a call, 816-532-8451. And uh, we'd love to get you set up with one of these. All right. Um, other than that, guys, it's, uh, oh, wow, it's time has flown by. It's already 10.50, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw the, the giveaway winner here in just a few minutes. So if you haven't already, make sure to go down in the description below and sign up. Um, there's a link to the giveaway. You just need your name, email, and call sign, and you can sign up to win an Anytone 878 Plus and a protective case and Bridgecom University and everything like that. Um, just right in just a few minutes, we're going to draw the winner for that. Must be present to win, guys. Must be present to win. Must have a valid amateur radio call sign as well. But we will be giving another one away. We gave one away yesterday, and it was really cool. Uh, the guy actually just happened to be, he happened to live just in a town, uh, not but like an hour away. So that was uh, just a, a coincidence, really. Um, but that was really cool that a uh, local guy got it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you guys have any more questions just before we you know wrap up here, we'd love to answer those for you. Uh, we really hope you've enjoyed it so far. Uh, make sure to hit the like button down below. It looks like we have 224 people, guys. So that's uh, quite a bit more than last time. Um, so that's really cool that uh, you guys are still on uh, doing that. Guys, if you have any more questions before we go, please ask them. 
Um, so we can get them answered for you. <laughs> a GoFundMe for the replacement antenna. He's mm-hmm. wondering if we need to start one. Uh, no, these things are. <laughs> we have a whole box of them just sitting there. So yep. yeah, it'll be fine. Antennas. Well, we can. Well, <laughs> but if you if you want to repay us, just go go and place an order. Uh, Please for place an order. Tone HT or a mobile and a five seven eight mobile, anything like that, and that would be more than sufficient to cover <laughs> it. So cool. Um. Yeah, guys, uh, operators are standing by right now as well, 816-532-8451 to answer your phone calls, ask any more complicated questions, and uh, and anything like that. Andrew, is it Mars capable? Uh, Yes, you would use something called professional mode, and we have a video which shows how to set your radio for professional mode. Yeah. There you go. Yep. But... uh, yeah, per FCC regulation, guys, these radios, they are, the handhelds are part 90 and the commercial 578 is part 90, so you can use them on commercial frequencies, but out of the box, they are sold as amateur radios, and uh, they're limited to the amateur bands. Um, cool. And even in professional mode, they have lockout of certain frequencies that nobody should ever use a part 90 radio on, so, yeah. There you go. But, yeah. Um, William Leffer is asking if we have a coverage map. For the east, for the Kansas and the western Missouri, uh, we don't have a coverage map available. I'm sure if you search the internet long enough, you could probably find somebody that does. Uh, maybe check out the BYRG page or something like that. Um, they've got a lot of repeaters around the area, but we don't. We don't have one. Okay. Um, can I? Uh, Donald Smith asks if he can use another 12 volt source for my stock charger. Is it really picky about voltage? What's the voltage range? Uh, I would assume you're talking about the Anytone bucket charger. It's uh, I don't really know the specs on that off the top of my head, but it most. Uh, um, I was looking at the wall wart the other day. I believe it to be 12 volts at half an amp or 500 milliamp that plugs into that. So I believe it's a fairly standard little bucket charger. It's a trickle charger. It's not, you know, a super, super high-speed charger. That's why I mentioned before it's going to take 48 hours to get a full charge in that battery. So There you go. Um, cool. Um, oh, Robert Miller is asking, can he program the 878 via Bluetooth? Uh, you cannot program the 878 via Bluetooth. Uh, that is just, it's the Bluetooth is purely for uh, audio purposes and for the uh, push-to-talk button. Uh, that comes with it. So you can, it's uh, the programming must be done either by the front panel or in the computer programming software uh, that comes with the radio. And you'll do that by connecting it to a Windows computer and and programming it that way. Um, guys, uh, probably I'm going to draw the winner here in just a minute. And uh, what I'll do is I'll draw them out. Make sure if you win, uh, I will I will say the winner's name and call sign and probably where they're from. And if you are the winner, say I am that name and call sign um, because some of you don't have usernames that are the same as your names and so it can be confusing when you guys say like I'm here or something like that um, so make sure you guys do that um, but yeah it's already 11 th- or 1055 so I'm gonna go ahead and pull my computer up here and I uh, will draw the winner if you guys have any further questions uh, for later on I'd love to hear them make sure to you know submit a ticket and uh, or something like that and or give us a call and we'd love to get your questions answered hopefully make more videos and things like that and so uh, we can share the share the, the information share the love uh, so I'm gonna go here to my uh, the giveaway let's see how many people are in this giveaway here again thank you all for joining uh, we really appreciate it really really like having these streams and I love doing these these sales for you give you guys a good deal and uh, so yeah we'll see let's see uh, we have there's 189 people in the giveaway. We have 255 people on the stream now, so it looks like some of you haven't signed up, but uh, that's okay. I gave you lots of chances, um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the winner. All right, and I'm going to draw it, guys. Ooh, who's it going to be? All right, we got a guy. Let me just confirm his, uh, his call sign here, and uh, then we will announce him. And... He will be the winner if he is present on the stream. Alrighty, guys. So the winner today is Steve Stevens. Call sign Whiskey Five Sierra Romeo S W Five S R S W Five S R S. Guys, Steve Stevens from Odessa, Texas, USA. Odessa, Texas, USA. Steve Stevens. If you are here, I'll give you a minute um, and to, uh, to comment if you're still here. And uh, if you are. 
then uh, we will, you'll win. So let's see, this is, okay, there he is, right there, guys. You just claimed it. Congratulations, Steve. Uh, we've confirmed your entry. Make, uh, please give us a, uh, shoot us an email. And, uh, it may be in the description below. If it's not, uh, somebody will comment it. Our email is contact us at bridgecomsystems.com. Um, just give us your, uh, your address and your uh, phone number, and so we can send you out this radio. Um, but to everyone else, uh, guys, thanks for, uh, for joining the stream here. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the sale. It's in the, uh, there's a link in the description below. We're giving you a, if, when you buy an Anytone HT, like the 878 Plus, 878 or 868, you're going to get a free protective case here, guys, a $25 value. You're also going to get Bridgecom University, and this sale goes from uh, now until tomorrow, Friday at midnight. And you're also going to get 10% off all additional accessories you like to get. Um, so make sure you stock up on those when you place your order, because uh, we don't do this very often. Um, but with that, guys, uh, other than that, make sure to join the Facebook group, link in the description, and uh, keep an eye on your email inboxes and your, your Facebook and, and uh, YouTube feeds for any other uh, cool announcements that we have. we got some cool stuff coming down the pipe, a lot more cool videos for you, and, uh, and everything like that. So we want to keep it up for you. Yeah, lots of good congratulations. Congratulations, Steve. We really appreciate it. We always have a winner, guys, and they are real, and we do actually send these radios out. Um, so with that, I think we're going to close out just a minute or so early, um, but uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure to hit the like button and uh, subscribe for the next uh, announcement. And with that, I think we're going to close. Again, this is Daniel, NZROY, and Sebastian, KB0TTL, uh, with BridgeCom Systems, wishing you a 73.